Hi, Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations. Today I'm going to be showing you the installation of a remote hydraulic kit on this Mahindra 1626. This customer bought a grapple and wants to run it with this tractor, but it doesn't have the hydraulics to run it. This kit taps into your existing loader circuit and can give you a remote on the front to run like a grapple or auger, other types of implements on the front, or it can hook up to the back to run a hydraulic top link or other implement you might want to plug into it. Hydraulic top links, I sell them on my website. Check it out right below, tractorinnovations.com. I sell lots of different sizes that you can't find in the farm store, specifically for these smaller tractors. While you're at it, take a second to like and subscribe so that other people can find this channel and improve their tractors as well. Now, today we're working on a Mahindra, but I build these kits for John Deere, Kubota, LS, any tractor out there, Massey Ferguson, any tractor out there, we can come up with a solution. I may just need a couple pictures of the uh, mounting area and the quick couplers. And even older tractors that don't have quick couplers, I can build a kit for you. This tractor has this really nice mounting spot, so we're going to be mounting a bracket and mounting the valve right here. This is a switching valve, so the way this is going to operate for a grapple is we're going to install it on his dump circuit. When he pulls out on this valve, the dump circuit is going to be locked in place and right and left movement on the lever is now going to open and close the grapple. So really simple installation, really simple operation. And by avoiding all the electronics, we can use a made in the U.S. valve. I buy the hoses from a company here in the U.S., made in the U.S., so as much made in the U.S. as possible. It's going to install with simple hand tools. Let's get started. The first step in this installation is to install the mounting bracket. That's going to go right here on these bolts that hold up the quick coupler area. So you need a three quarter inch wrench and a backer wrench or socket. And we are going to loosen these up. With those nuts off, I can now take this bracket Take the bolts out one at a time so nothing drops off here. That bracket is going to mount here on the outside. And I'm ready to put the lock washers and bolts back on. This is a 2021 model tractor. If your tractor does not have this piece right here, we would simply drill two holes here and mount the switching valve to the firewall. I've got other videos of older tractors that, that we mount right there, but since we have this nice mounting space, it's really nice to use it and not have to drill into your tractor. The next step is to open up your hardware bag and take out the two long bolts that are going to mount the switching valve. Those slide right here into the upper holes, and then we'll go get the switching valve and put it on. With those bolts in place, I can slide the switching valve right into place and now I'm ready for a lock washer and nut here. Holding the switching valve in place I'm going to put on a regular washer, lock washer, and a nut. Same on the bottom. Washer, lock washer, and nut. All right, when you got those finger tightened, go ahead and tighten those up with a half inch wrench and backer. Now's a great time to install the knob. You should have a lock washer on your knob. Thread it right into that piston. You can get it finger tight, and then the piston will probably start to turn. If you want to cinch that up a little tighter, you can grab with a pair of pliers on the piston, but be very careful. We do not want to pinch this area that will slide into the piston. You can only pinch outside, so best to slide the piston all the way in. That way, you're no chance you'll pinch anything you don't want to. And give that its final turn. All right, that's tight as it can be. You should now be able to move that in and out. And we're ready to hook up the hydraulics.
With the switching valve mounted in place, we're now ready to connect the hydraulic quick couplers into the loader circuit. On this Mahindra 1626, we've got our colors labeled here. Blue and green here in the back are the lift circuit. So for this tractor, we're gonna leave those alone. If you're running a remote to the back and wanna run a hydraulic top link and have the float function, you might hook that into your lift circuit. Today we're gonna to be plugging into the dump circuit, which is the yellow and red. So before we disconnect anything, take a second and move your loader lever control to all four positions. Make sure all the pressure is out of your system. All right, with all the pressure out, now I can do these quick couplers one at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the uh, yellow. And yellow is in front. So I'm gonna bring it up here to the front port of this switching valve. All right, nothing to it, that's easy. On some tractors, you may need to loosen this uh, nylon sleeve that they're in, the protective sleeve, but on this tractor, there's enough slack. Okay, so the front port got the yellow. Now I'm gonna take the hose coming out of that front port. They're lined up vertically there and go right back to the yellow quick coupler here. And take a second here to really route things neatly. I think I'm gonna route this under this nylon sleeve, and that's gonna get it routed inboard very nicely. All right, yellow is connected there. Now I repeat the same process for the red. Red is in the rear, so I'm gonna bring it out here to the rear switching valve coupler, go right back in, Take a second, you can really make a good looking install if you don't cross your hoses. I really want this to look good. All right, everything is connected to the loader circuit. That's the majority of the work. With the loader valve mounted and the hydraulic connections made to the loader circuit, we're now ready to take the long hoses and route them to our remote location. On this tractor, we're gonna be plumbing in front remotes for a grapple, but the exact same kit could run to the rear to get you rear remotes. So take a minute as you do this to really work on your routing and make a nice, neat installation. Look for places where the hoses would get pinched or uh, rub against things, hot things. On this tractor, there's a pretty good path to tuck right inside run along the inside of the arm, and then we'll mount the bracket on the front to uh, place these remote couplers. This tractor is getting agriculture style couplers, but I can put any kind of coupler, including flat face or other style couplers on your tractor, usually for the same price, because I stock them all. We're at the front of the tractor, ready to mount these quick couplers for the remote here. And those are gonna mount in a bracket. This kit comes with a complete bracket. This kit has two W-shaped brackets that are going to clamp the remote couplers onto this mounting bar. And I have all these extra parts up here because I wanna show you we're gonna mount these quick couplers right here, kind of sideways, so that the quick couplers from the implement can kind of stick into them and still have all this hose ready to articulate with the implement. If we had this sticking forward, it could really be in the way of the implement moving. You get a straight mounting bar with the kit, but if you look with these W brackets, if you mounted that bar flat, this part up here would be rubbing. So I just took that mounting bar, put it in a vise, and put a little bit of a S-curve in it. So when we mount it here, it'll stick up just a little bit and we won't have those couplers rubbing on this panel. So to get this put together, I'm gonna go pre-assemble these W brackets with two of the bolts so that they're ready to pinch onto those quick couplers. To pre-assemble these W brackets, I'm going to dump out all my hardware here. I 
and I'm gonna take the smallest bolts, lock washers and nuts. Those go on the outside here so I can stack these W brackets. Drop in the smallest bolt on the outside. Lock washer and nut. Put that nut on just far enough so it doesn't fall off. We still want lots of wiggle room. Just drop that bolt in. Same on the other side. Okay, that's all the pre-assembly we need to do. Now it's gonna be really easy to put those quick couplers in there and then clamp it to the mounting bar and that's when we'll drop in the longer bolts. Back at the front of the tractor, I've got my mounting bar and my W brackets ready to go. Taking a look here, I see this grapple came with female couplers on it. We're gonna swap those out for the male coupler tips that come with this kit. We'll do that in our last step. For now, let's go ahead and get this mounting bar on the tractor. To put the mounting bar on, I replaced the washer that uh, the tractor already had with one of these bigger washers that comes with the kit. Just uh, since it is a larger hole in the mounting bar, I really want to cover that up. All right, that mounting bar is firmly mounted, but if something really hits it hard, it is going to be able to move and not break things. I like that. The hoses are still kind of loose here going down the loader arm. We'll come back later and zip tie those. But for now, make sure they are straight, not tangled up or curled and slip them into the W brackets. We left those nice and loose. Put the coupler in there until the W brackets clamp on there in two of the grooves. This clamp should get in the back groove on the outer sleeve of that quick coupler. It should be sticking out about a quarter inch on each side. So that looks right. Slide in your second quick coupler. Make sure it sits just the same. And you can go ahead and start to tighten these outer nuts so that it stays in the groove. Okay, before we mount this hard, make sure your lines haven't gotten twisted. We want those to look really good. And now, depending on how you bent this bar, you can straddle the bar you can be on top of the bar, under the bar, any which way. This one works well to go ahead and straddle the bar there. And I'm checking here, this bracket is not rubbing on anything on the tractor. I like that. Take the rest of your hardware, drop in these 5 16 bolts, and we'll put a lock washer and nut on the bottom. I'm gonna do this back bolt first. Because if I don't, I can't reach it with the front bolt in the way. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that one completely up before I try to put the other one on. There we go. Half inch wrench tightens these middle bolts. Then we'll put on the 7 16 ratchet and wrench and tighten the outside bolts. All right, with this grapple, you are getting a little extra bonus footage. This grapple, he bought it used, came with the wrong fittings on here. So I've got it clamped in my vise. We're going to remove this coupler. Whoa, that baby's tight. There we go. A vise is just about required to get enough clamping force on here. We're using regular old thread seal tape here. And in the correct direction, six wraps. All right, now that that has the correct tip on it, it's a really good idea to test your quick couplers here and see if they will grab and release like you expect. So on these breakaway type couplers, that outer sleeve is held fast and the inner part slides 
There we go. These parts are already oily, so tape is really the only way to get it sealed up. Pipe dopes are great, but once something's already oily, ugh, it never seems to work. Alrighty, I'm going to plug this in, and then I'm going to test the whole system, watching really carefully for these hoses. Yeah, I'm going to tip it all the way out and make sure we've got enough flex in these lines, and I'll run the grapple. We have the installation complete with the switching valve mounted and connected to the hydraulics. We've got the front end connected, and let's fire it up and see how it goes. So there you have it, the easiest and most affordable way to get remote hydraulics on your tractor, whether you need it for the front, for a grapple or other implement, or to the rear for something like a hydraulic top link or something you might pull behind. Don't forget to check out my website, tractorinnovations.com. You can also find hydraulic top links there and kits for all makes and models of tractors. Today it was on a Mahindra, but uh, you can find it for John Deere, Kubota, New Holland, all the makes and models out there. Give me a call. Let me know how I can help you get more out of your tractor. Thanks for watching.